Pop Spotlight, brought to you by Dragon's Lair Comics and Fantasy. Hey everyone, I'm Adam Harry from Bell Lost Souls with Michael from Dragon's Lair Comics and Fantasy. We're back with another Tabletop Spotlight. Dude, you got the Gene Sealer Cults. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So, so we here at Bowls got to tease it all week. A little bit. A little bit. I little saw bit. the little bits you guys put up. We're actually now going to go through the whole thing. We've got it here, the full book, yes. brand new. Got all the rules for all the units. We're gonna talk about everything. We're They're finally gonna get to talk about everything. Pretty crazy. I There's can't a lot wait. of awesome weapons. There's a lot of awesome units yes. and some really good special rules. Oh, this, so the cult you, ambush stuff is just. If you've been looking forward to this book, you're gonna want to check this out because we're gonna go through all of it. It's pretty awesome. For us vets in the uh, the industry, you know, or, or players of 40k, this book has been in the in the wait. You know, we've been waiting for this book for like 20 plus years. Mm -hmm. at this point. So 25 years oh, yeah. or more. Uh, I'm I'm so thrilled that the day has finally come that it's out again. So it's right let's here. quit stalling and take a look inside the new Gene Stealer Cults Codex. All right, Michael, it's Gene Stealer Cult time. The Gene Stealer Cults. Just want it is it, there is an S. Yes. It is Gene Stealer Cults. I have to say this is probably one of my favorite cover pieces they've done for a codex in a oh, long yeah. time. Oh yeah. The Death Watch one was cool, and like I always like you know like the Orc one and stuff like that. This is really awesome, especially with the patriarch. Yeah, I, I love the subtlety so. of the patriarch in the background, the hybrids in the background, mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. little bits of mining equipment, but just like yep. the magus is like, "What's up?" Just pop it out right at there. You. We can take Flip a look it back. Yeah, pay no attention to our support under the book, which is a phone. It's fine. It's a phone. It's fine. So of course, you know, you get your typical uh, fancy art, your little description, and oh yeah, you know, standard stuff for GW Codex. Stuff just here. you know, we've done teasers, but. I love it. You get you get some Astro Militarum stuff in the mm -hmm. background. There's a Laban Rust back here. There's a, a Chimera chassis back there. One of their big old Goliath. There's trucks. a Goliath. There's a Rockliner Goliath. Oh yeah. Then there's the awesome Patriarch leading the charge. You know, it's <laughs> this book is it's so rad. good, guys. So uh, it's so good. Let's stop stalling. Yeah, let's get in here. We are going in. Going of course, in. nice purple theme here. Live at the time. Going in. So we got your contents here. Yep. Uh, you can see. Typical table, table contents. Yep. You know, pretty standard stuff. Uh, break down all the awesome art. Sections. This book is full of really cool art. I have to say, I'm. I mean, they're not out yet, but the Goliath trucks, I think, are probably my favorite oh. model. They gotta be coming out like next week. They are. They yeah. gotta be. I mean, they gotta be. So. Hopefully by the time you guys watch this, it's in the future and they're another all, another one out. A really great piece of art with the um, Howling Griffins fighting mm -hmm. the, uh, the 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 Gene Sealer uprising there, which is yeah pretty awesome. Very cool. Now we we did our coverage. We here at Bulls, we went through a lot of this stuff, but because this is a, this is a tabletop plot, we're still going to go through a lot yeah. of the, the front part of this with the lore yeah, and everything. We'll, we'll go through pretty much all of it. Yeah, because the lore is just really good in this book too. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've gotten a chance to read it, but. Um, it's just all about the subvers subversiveness of the cult, mm -hmm. and you know, obviously this is talking about the generations, the pure strange and stealers, yeah. and all that. Which, so, by the way, the pure strains are just better. Yeah, they're just they're just <laughs> wholly better than. Uh, the are you high fleet? I'm um, pure strain. You're, I'm just better. Yeah. Which you'll see when we actually get to the stats. Yeah. It's pretty great. Uh, this is a call out to the Death Watch Overkill game, obviously, mm -hmm. with the uh, mm -hmm. Ghost Art Quintus mentioning that again. That was supposedly the like the first big outbreak mm. that was recorded. Um, you know, because when the Tyranids invade, they shut down all communication anyway. Yeah. So, um, this Guilty is one of those. Cassius, of course, getting yep. nice reference call out there. Yep. So, yep, good Very times. cool. Great box set, by the way. Just offhand. Yeah. Great game. Yeah, a lot of fun. Uh, this is the really cool Circle of Life. Horrifying. <laughs> Completely terrifying. I would not want to fight that. Yeah. That's why I'm not a Space Marine. Yeah, that is pretty cool. That and a lot of other reasons. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, this is such a cool page just to show yeah. off all the different generations, uh -huh. talking about, again, how the cult works and the infiltrates. It's just, ah, oh, so good. So good. And you get your breakdown, basically, of how the army functions. Of course, your patriarch, along with your primus and your mages at the top. Yep. Uh, essentially, your, your commanders, basically. Yeah. And the, the, the unique thing is, uh, because this cult is formed off of a single patriarch, Mm -hmm. um, but eventually grows into to more stuff. Mm -hmm. um, there's a tipping point to where if if the patriarch dies, the next oldest pure snaring gene sealer just takes over, mm -hmm. and the cult keeps going. If the primus dies, they just replace him. If the magus mm -hmm. dies, same thing. So it's really one of those things like if you want to wipe out the gene sealer cult, you've got to one catch it early, mm -hmm. or you've got to kill everybody. And honestly. Kill everybody is probably the easier probably option. the easier one. <laughs> we recommend flamers. More yeah, than anything. yeah. Not a lot of high armor values in this army, but no. Uh, which again, you'll see when we get stats. Yeah, cult of war again. Just talking about all that stuff. Uh, this was this was uh, a couple of different 
um, um, cults. Yeah, kind sort of, of like battalions, essentially. Yeah, basically. Yeah. They have rules for most of these in the back as yeah. well. So. They, they kind of reminds me, it, you could actually run, I, I think it'd be really funny to do like a, a, a campaign where two cults are fighting over the same territory. That could be interesting. Because it's like Hatfields versus McCoys, because they're kind of, uh -huh. they're kind of like, because it's a patriarchal society, Yeah. they're all kind of like in it for themselves or mm -hmm. up until the genes that show up. But anyway. You get some cool iconography here of yeah. different uh, cults Very cool from the stuff. Imperium. Obviously the inner worm is sort of their... Uh, Traditional, similar to their sort of traditional yeah. look, you know, bladed cog and all yeah. that. But these are all really cool. They all mm -hmm. have later on. We'll, we'll get to that. Actually, is, is all the different paint schemes for them. Mm -hmm. like it's just really cool. Yeah. A lot of a lot of fun lore and different, you know, iconography. Yep. And, and again, these cool represent stuff. cults that were all from different uh, planets, I guess, or or different, different types, sectors, or something. Yeah, yeah. Like this was obviously a Mechanicum, like a planet, uh, mm -hmm. a Forge World, or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, this was just an Imperial planet, I believe. Um, yeah, it's all pretty cool stuff. Very awesome. Also very inspirational for uh, painting. Yeah, I love the color schemes they did. They did a really good job. They, they kept the, like the Gene Sealer purple theme. Yeah. And then just kind of worked off of that mm -hmm. with some really cool secondary and tertiary colors. Anyway, so again, a lot this of, is the day of ascension. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of different bits of lore here, different uh, sort of introductory yeah. things. The patriarch and his just disgusting He's totally face. munching down He's something. eating something, yeah. And you know, whatever. Uh, he's at least yeah. he's compared to the old school fat one on the throne. He's doing I mean, he's, he's doing he's him. Pretty, he's doing his thing. Yeah, he's doing him. You do you, buddy. That's right. So we have, <laughs> again, just a breakdown of all the units and sort yeah. of what they do. They got the, the the patriarch, which is obviously the more close combat oriented gene stealer cult guy. Then you've got the magus, which is the more psychically mm -hmm. tuned guy. And then you get the primus, is kind of a mix of the three of the yeah. two. Um, kind of a combat leader, but mm -hmm. um, pretty good stuff. Hybrids and metamorphs. These are the two uh, kind of early generation yeah. genes. We cultists. actually have a box of those over there. Yeah, sort of what the box art looks like. Boom, um, right here. Just this is just their box. You know, you yep. get five in the box. Simple, um, you know, simple unit, basic. That one's forty bucks, by this the way. It's forty bucks. By the way, if you're interested in this, yeah. But you're probably gonna want some. You probably should get them. Yes. <laughs> the hybrids are, are good. The the metamorphs are dirty. Uh, I think I like the metamorphs more just because they have a little less like guns and a little more like stabby bits. Yeah. Yeah. It's I a actually little, built it's a little freakier. Yeah, I built the hybrids uh, as hybrids because I I had the overkill box set there. and I wanted to have the leader and some of the special weapons for those units. Big old so, rock saw and all that. Yeah, so. the rock saw. Yeah, we'll get to the, we, we will get stuff. to all this We'll stuff. get to all this in a minute. We promise. Uh, moving on, Neophyte hybrids. These are your dudes. Yeah. These are the later generation guys that start to look more and more human, mm -hmm. uh, less uh, Sort of in between, yeah. in between sort of a, an acolyte hybrid and like a guardsman or something. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's what's cool about them is they, they basically function a lot like guardsmen. I mean, he looks like he's wearing guardsman armor he right He is. Here, yeah. uh, you've got the miners and then you've got the guardsmen. And again, because they infiltrate society, mm -hmm. that's why you have these units of genes that are cultists that pop up to take, you know, take mm -hmm. over a whole mm -hmm. unit. Um, then you've got the piercing gene stealers, which again, so good. Compared to the, their tier day counterparts, yeah, um, these these awesome guys, the Aberrants are. I remember yeah. building these in the Overwatch, yeah. the Overkill box yeah. set, and they're just they're, they're amazing beastly. models. Yeah, I, I want to see the kit for these guys because we haven't seen that yet, and mm -hmm. I'm, I'm curious to see what that kit's actually yeah. gonna be like. So. Interesting. Um, then we have, oh, of course, the Goliaths, the two the different one, versions. The one that so many people have been waiting for. Oh, so cool! A little disappointed it wasn't a limo, but you know a what? Bit. A this bit. this utility vehicle. Is just cool looking. I, I, there's something about it. It's a weird cross between like the orc truck yeah. and the tower rocks. Yeah. Um, you can kind of see where the orcs. You can see sort of. You can see sort of the Imperium like design. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. But it's rough enough that you could loot it, and it wouldn't look too different from a truck. Absolutely. Cool. Like I mean, it has sort of the boxy Imperium shape. Yeah. Um, and the one thing I've always not liked about the Torox is the the treads. Yeah, yeah. Where it should just have wheels. You know, if that's like the a Torox, Torox sort of done right. Yeah, if the Torox opinion. had. Um, it was a half track, so it had yeah. front wheels and not the, that, yeah. I think that kit would have been amazing too. Um, what's interesting too, I want to call out, is if you look, the, the cockpit for the driver's seat is actually right in the center. Mm -hmm. So unlike a regular car where your driver's steering wheel is on one side or the other, um, it's right in the middle, mm -hmm. which is kind of weird. That makes me think again, this is definitely a city utility vehicle. Mm -hmm. like, a, like Think like a street sweeper or something like that. And then you've got the rock grinder, obviously keeping with the, the mining theme. Yeah. So. Which is, I think, one of my favorite things about sort of the aesthetic of the army is their mm -hmm. their focus on mining. I mean, it really, I think, makes them stick out, especially with their weapons. Yeah, and it makes that whole under, you know, under underground threat um, ambush thing and they, make way more sense. They have the ambush rules oh, to so prove it. 
Uh, some extra Astra Militar Health are getting Sentinels, mm -hmm. other armored vehicles like Lehman Rest. Lehman Rest, obviously, weird. and that stuff. Yeah. So, um, yeah, some more Pink breakdown dynasties, of dynasties, which is timeline stuff. Yeah. So, all, all fun stuff to read about. I definitely recommend fluff. it. Yeah. It's good backstory. Got Can we get into awesome the paint jobs? Yep. Awesome paint jobs all around. This is kind of the default, I would I would say, uh, uh, for the for the cult. And we get what, into I, this. what I do like, uh, well, what I personally like and what a lot of people may not like is that outside of, you know, the aberrance and the, the pure strain and stuff, there's not really like a primary color to a lot of these guys. Yeah. Like obviously there's the purple, and, you know, skin, but all their robes and armor and stuff are sort of a multitude of different colors. And you can literally go nuts. Yeah. I mean, it, it seems like it's a lot of, a lot of options basically to paint. Yeah. Yeah. I think for hobbyists and modelers and stuff like that out there, they're going to have a ton of fun painting up and converting these guys to do pretty mm -hmm. much whatever the heck you want, mm -hmm. especially with the vehicles. Like, yeah. I, I personally have a yellow high fleet, which mm -hmm. is the opposite color of purple. So mm -hmm. how am I gonna do that? Well, I've got some plans. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm using a lot of my secondary and tertiary colors that I use to paint my high fleet to do their clothes and stuff, mm -hmm. and the skin's still gonna be yellow. So yeah, very we'll cool. it, But then the, the humanoid, more human guys are gonna be more, you know, pale skin. More human skin tone. Yeah. yeah, so that'll be fun. But uh, yeah, this, more, this is just more cult. Awesome, and these are colors. these are it's a hive cult, so uh -huh. you know if they're in a hive city, that's kind of what they would look like. I love that they showed off the Weber just yes. to tease it. Oh yes. So we'll get to that. We're get, we're getting to that. I promise, guys. Uh, all the cool uh, special weapons. Yeah, and I like, like that they sort of show you. You know, you can do pretty standard Lehman Russ camouflage mm -hmm. with you know different Jean Steeler iconography. Yeah. Things Slap like a marking or two on there. Yeah, I mean then you're good. And actually, they're coming out. Uh, I know the kits are coming mm -hmm. with a Jean Steeler upgrade. upgrade sprue. Yeah, yeah, so that'll be awesome. Yeah, and then I just I really want to want to get these Goliaths and paint them up because I like can't a fire wait. Truck a it bit. does. It totally does. Except, Except this one causes the fires. It, yeah, it puts it you know <laughs> puts fires on you for sure. Uh, yeah. One of my personal favorite new weapons. The rock yeah, saw? The old rock saw. Yeah. We'll go over the rules for that in a little uh, yeah. I think I like the the cutter slightly better than the yeah. rock saw. We'll show, we'll get to a lot. Nice battle here that they yep. painted up with uh, some guardsmen. Convert or die. Mm-hmm. Well, guess what? <laughs> it, it's die. You, yeah, you're gonna die. They, they died. They, they chose death. So cool. I, yeah, like I said, I want to see uh, the, box of the, the Aberrant kits. Yeah. They, was, can't wait for that one. This is awesome. Of, cool. A lot of awesome art. Yeah. We'll skip ahead a little bit here. Yeah. We're going to get to the part everybody's been dying to get to, which is the rules. Got so some heavy metal stuff there still. Oh, yeah. Moving on. So here's the first thing. The big thing is the, we've seen this already. This is the, the quote, Decurian style, mm -hmm. the big, the big uh, um, detachment. Mm -hmm. So this is, you know, if you want to take the big detachment, this is what you got to do. So we've got, um, all the requirements for that, so you have to one to six core, plus one auxiliary, and zero to three command. You don't have to have command. Yeah. Um, so you have to have one of some of these guys. The command benefits, we've t talked about these already, but uh, we'll go over them, not in this video. We've talked about them before, we've teased yeah. those. Um, cult Father, so if you take the patriarch, uh, the, yeah, patriarch for the detachment as your warlord, you can re-roll the result when rolling the warlord table. So we've seen that before. In this book specifically, though. Yeah. Not just your general, you know, for right, right, right. warlord traits. Which they have some really good warlord traits. Okay, mm -hmm. we're getting all that. Mm -hmm. uh, you go. Can you read the, the next thing? I got a weird. Yeah, word. it's the uprising. An uprising generation is the making. Your non-vehicle units in your detachment have the infiltrate rule. So for a unit that can already sort of sneak around ambush yep. people is pretty good. Um, and if they already have the infiltrate, they have the shrouded rule during your first turn. Which is Plus, nice. you can add one to your reserve, and your opponent subtracts one from their reserve rules. Which is awesome. So it's basically the ambush. You know, uh, command benefit. Yeah. If you want to really pop up, murder people, take and, a command know, relay. Yeah. Yeah. That's. I mean, that's the rule you want yeah. basically. And then numbers beyond counting is every time you know a unit arrives from reserves, your ongoing reserves specifically, uh, you can return D6 models that were slain previously, so they get reinforced. Right. Hits. So the first time they come on the board from reserves is not ongoing reserves. No. But if they go back into reserves, and there's lots of ways to are, do that. There are a bunch of rules for that. So you can come back on from the ongoing reserves and you mm -hmm. get more models back. So it's a yep. great way. It, we've been talking about this all week and it's so cool to finally get to just talk to little tactics for a little bit. Mm -hmm. These guys are gonna be one of those armies that they are going to be able to overload, overload one side of the board, kill a bunch of stuff and then fade away. Yeah. And then come right back. Yeah. The and that's, I mean, it's, it's almost sort of 
it's not sort of horde style and you know style of normal Tyranids mm -hmm. because you know you can just bring millions of different you know termagants or whatever and just you know let them die. But these guys again with this specific rule especially yeah you can you can almost take them as a horde and keep replenishing them with yeah. their multitude of different rules to yeah. get into ongoing reserves. That's only a D six, so it's not as good as yeah. say like without number where you're pulling the whole unit. Yeah. But in conjunction with the uh, cult ambush rules, you'll see why mm -hmm. these guys are so scary. So uh, we'll get to those. Uh, just that yeah, stuff. Of course, today she all your war gear. A lot of war gear that you know obviously has been seen before, like stubbers and yeah. you know flamers and, and stuff. And like that. We don't that, really want to go over the points anyway because that's yeah. boring. But um, patriarch, we've seen this guy before from Death Watch. Mm -hmm. um, cool stuff though. I want to call out. He's got unquestioning loyalty, mm -hmm. which everybody's like, what the heck does that do? <laughs> it's actually a really funny ability. Um, that special rule basically allows the patriarch to take lookout sir roles. Uh, when in challenges mm -hmm. and and auto basically auto pass them mm -hmm. so like if he's in there with a bunch of dudes and they're like you're gonna kill the father no <laughs> some dude just jumps just in the jumps way. in front of the yeah whatever. so he's gonna be really uh kind of a pain in the butt in challenges yeah, uh, yeah. i mean you can you can just sort of see a stat line basically he's kind of a the monster. monster he's supposed to be yeah i mean with a weapon skill of seven to start yeah. And four attacks, you're kind of Tough, screwed. Toughness five, so power fist aren't. I mean, gonna... his strength is six. If you're playing, you know, anything less than Marines, he's just going to insta kill people. Pretty much. On top of that, he's got access to Biomancy, Brute mm -hmm. Mind, and Telepathy. So, yeah. uh, Biomancy, obviously going to have some really dirty stuff in there mm -hmm. uh, increased strength, toughness, all that fun stuff. Telepathy. Let's go ahead and just make him invisible. Yeah. Yeah, and we'll show He's, why later on that's even worse. I mean, he is not with, friendly. With, uh, yeah, with some of the other things you can do to get mm -hmm. stuff into assault. So, moving on. Yep. I mean, and, of course, the familiar is... Yeah, he can he can have familiar. Yeah, course. extra dude. Yeah. He gets extra psychic. Mag, same same deal. Uh, not same deal, but... Um, same psychic. Same psychic stuff. Yeah, Biomancy, you know, Brute Mind, Telepathy. can take yeah. psychic, all that fun stuff. He Spiritual can also leader, familiar, of course. Yeah. Uh, friendly units within 12 inches... Of this unit, of this model, uh, that uh, have the ad adamantium special roll, which is kind of nice, just a little bit of mm -hmm. boost. These cheap though, it's forty points. So yeah, you can take a couple of those if you really, you know, you can fit it in. Yep. Primus, so you get your Primus, of course. Um, he has hatred, by the yeah, way. Yeah, and he also gives his faction hatred as well with his cult demagogue. Yeah. So if you, you know, if you roll your hatred, basically, if you, you know, if you change your rule, depending mm -hmm. on of course what you're playing, especially with your ambush tactics, with your, you know, oh, yeah. ongoing research, I mean, you could wreck somebody's day. These, yeah, these guys may not look like much just on paper, but when you start getting the synergies, uh -huh. and I hate to sound like that, but when you do start stacking stuff, these guys are scary. I mean, it's, I mean, the also, icon ward look is at the icon ward then. You put <laughs> these two with a unit, then they also get a six up feel no pain, of course. Yeah, they already and had feel no pain. They plus get one plus of one to, I mean, the synergy yeah. between each of the, the sort of command units and the leaders. Yep. I mean, it's just disgusting. And, and that's not counting what the actual sacred cult banner does on page 100, which mm -hmm. we'll get to, but that's just for having this model. Mm -hmm. So there's actually two rules in here. I think that one's, uh, Furious charge, but I'm not 100%. We'll check on that in here in a second. But it's just like, mm -hmm. just stacking. And then if you take a certain formation, it becomes a 24 yeah. range. It's just dumb. So the hybrids, uh, yeah. of course. I mean, they have a pretty standard line for, um, yeah. you know, for, for infantry units. They don't look like much, but yeah. man, the weapons go four basic dude? Yeah. It's pretty good. They, they're gonna go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Marines, no problem. Yeah, the ballistic skill threes, I, I feel, you could say it hurts them a little bit, but I don't feel like this army is really meant to shoot a ton. No, it's I just mean, way to they fire. Seem, they seem yeah. a little more up close and personal. Kinda. They have auto pistols for crying yeah. out loud. They're not gonna. This is not your shooting unit. Mm -hmm. Those guys are just gonna be there to like take pop shops when they can. But blasting charges, basically mm -hmm. frag grenades. Of course, you get obviously your. Uh, you can two two per five basically can get rid of their rending claws for all sorts of different mining yep. uh, mining equipment. Which of course is devastating. Which we'll, we'll read about in a second. Yeah, and again, these guys standing still because they're two attacks base. A basic dude is going to have three attacks with rending claws. Mm -hmm. So cheap rending for forty points for five dudes mm -hmm. and eight points now, a model. You we do start the math. with with these guys. We start to get in what I think is probably their biggest flaw. Um, well, not necessarily a flaw, but sort of their weakness, which is their save. Yeah. 
Five up save is not great, nope. especially nope. in these days, which is AP you know three or less for almost everything in the universe. Pretty much everybody's so, got access to AP five weapons. So yeah, I that's mean, why that film of pain becomes such a big deal. Yeah, right? because I mean, <clears throat> even if you go up against something you know like a Tau army, yeah, a lot of a lot of pulse rifles, AP five <coughs> is still going to screw your days over. Oh, so regular bolters are going to turn yeah. into shreds. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So neophyte hybrids on the next page here, kind of the same. They're 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 threes across the board pretty much. <clears throat> so they're. You know, weapon skill, blood skill three, strength three, not, not a mm -hmm. big deal, but they're cheap. Yep. Um, they have access to uh, <clears throat> the more, I guess, bigger, the, the, the larger uh, yeah. heavy weapons. Yeah, the heavy weapon list. <clears throat> also, these guys are the the same, this is the same page for the, um, sorry, I got a fragment here. <clears throat> these guys are the same for the Imperial Guardsman units that's coming out. Mm -hmm. So if you want to play converted, Imperial Guard, you use the same rules. Yeah. It's just, yeah. they have, they, and they actually have any options set up to where you can take either or. Mm -hmm. So you can either run them as the mining dudes or as an Imperial Guard uh, heavy weapon team. So. Oh, very cool. Yeah, so it's just, they thought ahead. They can also take a Goliath truck, truck or a uh, Chimera, so mm -hmm. that's pretty cool. Very cool. Yeah, and we have. I like those units. I like the look. I like the guy, these guys here with like the full face masks. I think those are pretty funny. <laughs> oh yeah. So the Metamorphs are pretty neat. Uh, you get Metamorphs, of course, a very similar sort of stat line yeah. uh, compared to the last two units. Yeah. Um, you know, these guys can also get... Strength 4, uh, Toughness 3, mm -hmm. Weapon Skill 4, Ballistics, and they don't have really a lot of shooting. Yeah, no, I mean, again, these guys are mostly melee. They have Rending Claws, but they can also get Metamorph Talons, Metamorph Claws. Again, all weapons that we'll take a look at in a little bit. Yeah, but, uh, and actually, they start with the Metamorph Talon. They can mm -hmm. replace their Rending Claw with a second yeah. set, yeah. which people are like, Why, what does that do? Metamorph talents for every pair you get, and we'll get to this, is plus one weapon skill. Mm -hmm. So you can end up with a weapon skill six mm -hmm. metamorph. Very easily. Very, very easily. So, And you may not want to do that because you don't want to lose the rending, but it, yeah. Uh, and they can also take a Goliath truck as a dedicated mm -hmm. transport, which is cool. Goliath truck rules, uh, also when we get to them, are pretty nasty. But then oh, yeah. let's let's talk about Gene Sealers first. Oh here. man, this is the... Let's this is the, if you're a tier player, you're happy, but you're also really sad at this point. I mean, stat line first, weapon skill six base. Just it's, moving on yeah. from that. No bullet skill, obviously. They're not gonna, they don't yeah. have any ranged weapons. But strength four, toughness four, pretty solid for, you know. It's pretty standard. A 70 point unit, it's not bad. The the big thing I think is initiative six, it's which huge. is only, I think, passed up in this book by the Patriarch and the yep. leaders. I think there's not a lot of stuff in the game that's initiative six or better. Yeah. So they're and then gonna go three attacks a piece. I yeah. mean they're they're just not nice. And they come base with rending claws. Mm -hmm. Here's the kicker though. Uh, look at all their special rules. Cult ambush, fleet, infiltrate, move through cover. They also have return to shadows and stealth mm -hmm. on top of that. And they get hyper reflexes, which Pre-Restraining Gene Slayers just have a straight up five of invuln save. I mean, with stealth, with, you know, all their other, I mean, with stealth alone, they're getting a better, you know. Cover save, A better yeah. cover but save. But there's a lot of stuff in the game that, that ignores save. cover. Yeah. And it, obviously you pick the better of the two, mm -hmm. but the fact that when you're in close combat now, yeah. you have a five up all the time is huge. It's huge. Like, oof. if you play Tyranids like me, and you have Gene Sealers that have been sitting on the shelf for a long time, you're now like, oh, I'll just run them as pure strains. Why? Just never play the normal DCRs. Yeah, game. because they come with stealth and a five up invuln save. Mm -hmm. If you take a Patriarch, they're even better. They gain the Furious Charge. Yeah. They're not, uh, we're, we're moving on. I don't know. Yeah, wanna, just, I feel like they're just sick. good. <laughs> they're just better. Ugh. So we get to the aberrance of, I mean, again, these are sort of the, the big brute guys. Mm -hmm. You got, um, what is it? Four per unit. Four of them. Like, yeah. These for 120 again, points, it's a little weird, but yeah. These again are the guys from uh, also from the overkill box that don't yeah. have a box for themselves just yet. Yeah. But I'm sure it's on the way. Probably gonna happen. Uh, they get feel no pain, base and stubborn, which is which, nice. Yeah. They're not going anywhere, uh, and they're really not gonna go anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, now, correct me if I'm wrong. Is the power pick a new power weapon, or has that been around? The power pick is from the over overkill. It's from overkill. Okay. Yeah. So that's what I thought. Yeah. The rules. I, we'll show it off here uh, mm -hmm. in a bit. But it's, it's. I mean, it's you know. It's basically. Same it's another power weapon, essentially. Yeah. You get access to both of the, both all these uh, Astro Militarum units. This mm -hmm. is the same stuff, basically. Yeah, not much. Yeah, multi laser, heavy bolter. It's just nice to get some extra armor mm -hmm. and some extra firepower for these guys. So um, we're not going to get into these too much because these aren't in yeah. anything new. Typical stuff that yeah. you know from any. By the way, though, armored armor. Sentinels, pain in the butt. Just want to throw that out there. If uh, for a front armor 12 vehicle, um, yeah, that can fight in close combat. Yeah, they will tie up a unit. I've mm -hmm. seen it happen. 
It's got Sentinel, annoying. same kind yeah. of stuff. Basically. A little less armor, but whatever. The 35 points. Goliath truck, though. Yes. New, new limo, so to speak. Yeah. Now, when I first read this, I was a little surprised to see its armor is only 11. It's pretty low. I was a little surprised. Now the rock, uh, the rock grinder is that goes it? up to twelve. It yeah. does go up to um, what's it? 12, 11, 10, I want to say. Yeah, on the front. Yeah, it's twelve, ten, ten. So a little more with the extra stuff on the yeah. front. Yeah, we'll get but, to that um, too. You know, that's that's the one thing I noticed first was that that armor value. But then you look here at the rugged construction and you mm -hmm. see why. Uh, if the model suffers a crew shaken, uh, crew stun shaken, or immobilized on a die roll of four more, they ignore it. That's why. You still lose the whole point. You still lose the whole point and it only has three. Yeah. But I mean if you if you get hit with, you know, a, a high a high value strength weapon basically, you get immobilized, you could just say no, I'm not immobilized, essentially. Yeah. Nope, you're gonna keep on going. Gonna just truck and on. the fun thing is you can throw some demo charges in there to throw at people. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the demo charges are like a, it's a large blast, strength eight, AP two, just like mm -hmm. one shot. It just you'll see. <laughs> now, it is it is obviously a dedicated transport for a lot of things, but it can't carry pure change use or Patriarch. Yeah. Which it, they don't need it anyway, really. You, so. Not infiltrate. Um, I know a lot of people are complaining about the pure strains not having access to frag grenade equivalent mm -hmm. or whatever. The rest of the army has frag grenade equivalents. You should be assaulting with those guys first anyway. Mm -hmm. You're going to set them up, tie them up, and let the genius of their clean house. That's how that works. So then Rock Rider, again, has an extra uh, point of armor on the front. Mm -hmm. uh, not much else. I mean, it gets its drill dozer blade. Yeah, which, which we'll get to. We'll which get is to. so good. It's disgusting. And it also has rugged construction. It looks painful. I won't yeah. get in front of that. It reminds me of Total Recall. Mm -hmm. A, A little bit. Yeah. Now, the thing is, it, this one... Um, this one can carry 10 models. This one, unfortunately, can only carry six. Yep. But you also get, of course, the extra weaponry. Um, and I think it's, let me double check, extra, yeah, I mean, it has fire points and stuff, uh, access, other access points, all sorts of other mm -hmm. little different changes. Also demolition charge, of course. But you can also get clearance centers or heavy seismic cannons, crazy strong stuff. It reminds me of the Rhino Razorback kind of conundrum. A little bit, yeah. Because because of the, the, the same amount of models that you can transport, but then also just the te the fact that you can take the heavy seismic cannon, which is really mean, and the incinerator is also pretty good too. It's only a 25 point difference too from an normal yeah. Blade. Which is, yeah, not too bad. Not, not bad. The rock Respectful. dozer, the dozer blade too, by the way, <laughs> is a lot we'll, of fun. We'll, we'll make, it. well, it'll make orcs, I think, orc players a little jealous. Probably. Just a little bit. I feel like a lot of work players are going to be buying this kit though and looting it for, oh, yeah. for battle wagons and trucks. You should. Not, not that you get drilled those blades then, but still, no. it's very cool. It's, it's the Defrola 2.0 yeah. kind of. Oh, well, you'll see. Lamora Squad, uh, nothing to show off there. That You can take three of them and mm -hmm. they're the same. They're good. So. And then you get into um, formations. Some formations. Yeah. Which I, we could go through all these, but I'm sure. You guys can see them here. Yeah, it's time not... to rise up and take this power. We're not going to read all the formation special rules. Yeah. Uh, you guys can check those out. Some of out. them are really easy, of course, to get. This one you only need at minimum two units of neophyte hybrids. Yeah. So they're really easy to get a lot of them and get the bonus out of it. Yeah. So, so uh, they do they do silly silly stuff. Like mm -hmm. for instance, this one is uh, the the crew here. Each time a vehicle from this formation suffers a crew stunned or shaken result, that whole point. Or, sorry, that result is ignored. It still loses the hull point. So you don't have to roll anymore. Yeah. You, you just, just ignore it. it. And um, the thing about this formation is each each uh, unit has to take a Goliath uh, truck as a dedicated transport. So It's very truck heavy. Yeah. It's your your mechanized, you know, deliverance br brute mm -hmm. surge there. Subtraining, uprising, uh, that's just a ton of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, a lot of different claw, formations. Lots of different formations. Brute cycle. Just, just tank hunter, stuff like that. Extra explosives. We're yeah. not going to get all of that stuff. This, um, one, this one here is mostly rock grinders and stuff yeah. like that. So. This one was the one I was talking about earlier. Uh, the special rule for brute, brute cycle over here is plus one leadership. We're not going to get into that. The big one is the hold banner high. All units in this formation have the furious charge special rule while they're within 24 inches of their uh, acolyte icon ward. In addition, the range of this icon ward's uh, Nexus of Devotion spell uh, rule will affect units from this formation that are 24 inches of him instead of just 12. So basically, mm -hmm. it just doubles the radius. His aura is doubled. Which, it's radius, mm -hmm. which means it's actually 48 inches of board yeah. coverage. 24 inches circle. from the from model, him. basically. So, you're, these guys are going to end up with Furious Charge and the Nexus of Devotion stuff. And Furious that's Charge the, on a rock grinder. Or all of those pure string gene sealers because you need that extra, I don't just know. Pulp them. Yeah. First curse, I think this is gonna be actually a, a, a pretty popular one. Pretty simple. It's Patriarch, Pure Strain. You uh, have to take 20 gene sealers though. You do, but I mean, they're so good that I don't feel like that's a huge yeah. problem. Plus, you, you get also roll. get 
a strange mutation for the unit in the formation. Yeah. Uh, flesh hooks basically they don't take initiative penalties for. Boom! Rain. You just got your you just got your uh, go. your your assault grenades equivalent there. Hardened carapace is I feel probably pretty nasty as well. Simple four up save. Uh, toxin lance poison melee weapons also not nice. Yep. Uh, you can get rage special rule. You can get preferred enemy, which yep. depending on who you're playing against can be very helpful. Uh, and then perfect killing machine, you just get to choose which one you want. Yeah. So so pretty good. Yeah. Not a bad list of um, yeah. Modifications. If you were wondering, well, regular geniuses get access to all the you know adrenaline sacks and toxic. Well, yeah, but these guys do too. Mm -hmm. Just a roll on it. And yeah. honestly, of all of these results, I'd probably take a, a one. I'd take the flesh hooks almost every yeah. time. Just to keep them moving. Well, yeah. Just, just keep them in the fight. The thing about geniuses that gets them killed is what I like to call the shrubbery defense. Uh -huh. If you assault people in cover, you strike last because yeah. they don't have that. Yeah. The sh if you hide in a shrub, but now with flesh hooks, they just go, no, we're gonna strike first now. And they're gonna rip, <laughs> they can rip anything to shreds. Mm -hmm. uh, with with rending, I mean, even, even knights um, and big walkers are gonna be afraid of all of that rending attack. Like, well, especially if there's 20 of them in the unit. 80 attacks. Uh, 80, yeah. 8 zero. See, this is why I don't Not play. counting the Patriarch, I don't want to play way. against these guys. Not counting the Patriarch. I mean, they gotta get there. They gotta get there. True. They have ways of getting there, though. Yeah. <laughs> Which we're gonna Which get we'll to. Which we'll show you in the Cold Ambush. Uh, Neophyte, Cavalcade here. Yeah. We're gonna Simple skip on stuff. There. That's That's kind of the... Um, yeah. It's kind of the armored one. Yeah, it's more of an armored Lehman one. Rust, armored sentinels, that kind of stuff. Doting Throng is uh, a magus and some hybrids. Pretty simple. Yeah. They just get a uh, zealot special rule, basically, and they get some other... You get to re-roll and you get blessings, blessings, which yeah. if you're taking bio uh, biomancy and trying to get some boosts... Mm -hmm. eh, Not bad. Um, the the Brood Coven, this is just the three the, the three of them, the Patriot and the, and, the, and the Primus, which mm -hmm. they're fairly cheap, and they have their own special rules. Yeah, which is fleet, cool. counterattack, for an enemy. Yeah. So, pretty nice. Pretty good formation. Death overall. Watch piece art. Very pretty nice awesome. as well. Here's and a World now, War table. A pen, of course, with the, again, the World War Traits table. So, again, they have some pretty awesome World War Traits. Um, yes. You know, and that one ability you talked about where you can you can reroll. Um, yep. The Shadow Stalker, basically, World War has Stealth, which... He no. may or may not have it. Might already have it, but yeah. you know, could help. Uh, focus of Adoration is units in your faction with that have the counterattack rule within a foot of your warlord. Which is pretty good. So counterattack pretty nice. Pr counterattack on Gene Sealers. Let's go throw out there. Now Wall Creeper, I'm personally a fan of where they have move through cover, and his unit that he's in, your warlord, never suffer the initiative penalty for charging through Bingo. difficult terrain. So Again. if you put him in a pure strain unit, you get that warlord trait, then you can take your mutation for something else completely. And if you take him as your leader, you get to reroll twice in this chart, hopefully mm -hmm. you get a three. So it can really stack up. Yeah. Born Survivor, basically your warlord has the able not die rule, pretty simple, That's cool. but very helpful for a patriarch. Mm -hmm. um, Alien Majesty is all models in his detachment. Can use his leadership. Detachment. If using, yeah, if you're using a patriarch, his leadership's ten. So there you go. You're done there. And ambush. And some leader, of them have f stubborn. So mm -hmm. yeah. Ambush leader. Uh, when using cult ambush rules, which are over here, your warlord or any unit that he has joined, don't roll. You can just choose which ambush rule you want. So good. And they're pretty so good. nasty. Speaking of, let's get to these things. We've been talking about all game. Uh, so these all, are their. Time. I mean, these are basically just their special abilities to. Uh, to deploy onto or arrive onto the field. So we need to back up one second. We do need to show mm, yes. off the cult ambush. How yes. this works is units within this rule that infiltrate or arrive from reserve or ongoing reserve can choose to roll on the cult ambush table opposite instead of deploying or arriving from reserves as normal. Yes. So you can do this second turn when you start rolling your reserves. Mm -hmm. Or if you're infiltrating and you, you want to roll on this chart instead. So you can't pull. do it for vehicles. Correct. It's, okay. it's infil inf infantry only. And ambushing units move on only for other reserves, mm -hmm. unless you know that you, unless it has something specific. In the role. So, yeah. Then the return return to shadows is if you're not within six inches of an enemy model, you can be pulled from the battlefield, go into ongoing reserves, and come mm -hmm. back the following turn because it's. And again, you can't do that the same turn you arrive. Correct. And you can't do it for a vehicle. Yeah. But I mean, you can again. This is what we talked about: the rules to get guys off the board and put them back on somewhere else. Yeah, it's pretty good. Mm -hmm. So cult ambush. So good. Basically, this chart works like this. The higher you roll, the better. The better. Mm -hmm. uh, on a one, they just come onto your board edge as normal. Pretty your own tabled edge. Encircling the foe is a two. On a one or two, uh, the unit comes in from the left or the right, around three or four or five or six. It's basically standard mm -hmm. reserves. Uh, outflank. Mm -hmm. It's basically it's outflank. outflank. Uh, lying in wait. Uh, you can set the ambushing unit anywhere on the table that is nine inches away from your enemy unit. You can alternately set up the ambush unit anywhere on the table that is more than six inches away from an enemy unit, so long as no enemy model can draw 
line of sight to them. So you got, say, a, a you squad have of Marines. Squad of Marines coming past Ruin, big old wall, pop them right, you know, behind the other side of the wall. So you're more than six go. inches. The other thing about this too, is that's not a deep strike. That's yeah. his place. Mm -hmm. You just put them down. Perfect ambush is pretty fun. We just simple set them up anywhere that's more than six inches from any model. So if you're, you know, you're worried, oh man, those Marines are gonna charge my guys next turn. Nope. Pop them in front, there you go. Charge yep. my pure strains. Have fun, Have fun with that. Have fun with that. Yeah. Deadly trap. Uh, set the ambushing unit anywhere on the um, table that is more than six inches away from an enemy model. Mm -hmm. After placing the ambushing unit, you can immediately make a bonus shooting attack as if it were the shooting phase. Doesn't prevent the shoot unit from shooting again in the ensuing shooting phase. Mm -hmm. These bonus sh shooting attacks uh, cannot cause morale checks, but they do have the pinning special rule. Mm -hmm. uh, so you get a free shot and it's pinning. If the ambushing unit does not have any ranged weapons, it can instead choose to run in the movement phase. Yeah. That's right, folks. Run. Run. Now. This, I mean, six is the six yeah. is the, the king oh, of these rules oh, right so here. Good. You can see it's the came from below. Yeah, you want to read this one? Unlike other units that infiltrate or arrive from reserves, so basically anything else, the ambushing unit in question can charge in the first turn on the turn they arrive from reserves, but you set them up anywhere that's more than three inches from an enemy unit. Set the ambush unit up anywhere on the table that is more than three inches away from an you enemy You can put unit. them right in front of whatever's face, and they can immediately charge on that first turn they arrive. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's just horrifying. It should be. It is. Uh, let's talk about War Gear real quick. War Gear. We're gonna go through this pretty quick. We're yeah. taking a lot of time here, but um, we wanted to, to show the stuff off. A couple highlights of the, the, the coolest stuff. Yeah, web weapons, my personal favorite. They're mm -hmm. dumb. Uh, they're dumb because they're, they're AP special, which is equal to the strength of the thing you're attacking. Mm -hmm. um, so if you're attacking a space marine, it's AP four, which, okay. Doesn't but if you're attacking a guardsman who's strength three, it's AP three, mm -hmm. no cover save, no no armor save. Which makes sense, I guess. You have to have better strength to you know, break out of the Yeah, way. yeah, but like, Tau is gonna be in trouble with uh -huh. that. Orcs are gonna be in trouble with mm -hmm. that. Um, I'm a big fan of mining lasers. It's really simple. Oh, yeah. Long distance, strength nine, and AP two, but it's heavy one. Now, again, heavy one, Heavy weapons, you know, whatever. Sure. But it's strength, a last cannon. Strength nine in somebody's hand. Like he's carrying last cannon around with him. Yeah. Little, little shorter range, if I'm not mistaken. A little bit. A little bit. But not much. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, what, what are the cool things we? Sh the seismic cannon. That's another cool seismic one. Seismic cannon. This one gets one. better the closer it is. Uh huh. Uh, the basic seismic cannon is zero twelve. You get strength eight, AP three, heavy two, resonance. Uh, Farther away, you get a lower strength, but more shots. Mm -hmm. So that it goes from 12 to 24 inches, it goes to strength five, AP four. If you don't know, resonance basically. Two, yeah. two wound rolls and AP rolls of six uh, made with this weapon are resolved at AP one. Yeah. So if you're, you know, if you roll the wound, you get that six, you're, you're getting through the armor. Yeah, so. and again, the heavy cannon that you mount on vehicles, uh -huh. more of the same, but more shots. Yeah. So yeah. pretty pretty cool now, stuff. I like their melee weapons the most, I oh, think. Yeah. They have the coolest stuff for melee. Where do we want to start? Let's do, yeah, let's just I go mean, I think we have to talk about Snip first. Uh, well, Bone Sword, seen that. Bone Sword's nothing. Heavy Rock Cutter, twice your strength, AP2. Twice, twice your strength. Which is already pretty tough for these guys, but well, I mean, more strength four. Yeah, I mean you're looking at a strength eight melee weapon. It is unwieldy. Yes. Okay, it's basically a power weapon. Whatever, melee two-handed, mm -hmm. unwieldy. Sure. Snip. What does that do? Well, snip. When a model suffers one or more unsaved wounds, wounds that is, from this weapon, you must pass a separate toughness test for each wound suffered or be removed from play. That's your character killer, folks. You have to save every single one of those wounds or that model is just gone. If you didn't get killed from the double toughness. Which most things will. Most things most, will. Most basically marine this, lower. This should worry Tyranid players because oh, yeah. if you're a Carnifex. Oh yeah. You're done. That's not take more wounds, that's removed from play. We so talk, we, I don't. We talked about this a little bit ago where it's like you have to imagine these guys, they found this big rock and they're like, it's really good at cutting rocks. What else could I do? I'll put it in this guy's head. Yeah. Hey, look, he's dead. Look at that. Yeah. It's just silly. It's, I mean, rock drill is pretty simple, but it has pulverize instead. Yeah, it's basically um, the same thing. Uh, with it has pulverize, pulverize, you can basically uh, elect to make a single attack instead of your normal attacks. Mm -hmm. If you do, you get to hit as normal, but your strength is 10 and your AP is one. So that's so you your- just slam into someone's that's face. That's your land raider, like, I uh, gotta pop that's this your, thing. That's your armor popper. Yep. Heavy rock saw, strength two. Pretty simple. Times two, AP mm -hmm. two. 
has armor bane, two-handed unwieldy. Mm -hmm. So that's your other armor popper. Like yep. you need more help with that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the metamorph weapons are a lot of fun as well. Flesh of bone swords, that's, oh, yeah. we're not getting that. But these are really cool, the metamorph weapons. This is what I was talking about earlier. So the claw has the crush ability, talon has the scythe ability, and whip has the lash ability. Mm -hmm. Crush, monocle with the metamorph claws, plus two bonus to his strength during the fight sub phase. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, Scythe, a model equipped with a metamorph talent, has some plus one weapon skill. That's what I was talking about earlier. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you have two talents, it's a plus two bonus, so those stack. Yep. Lash, a model with this weapon, has plus three initiative bonus. Which, if you don't have initiative, you know, even if, if you, you don't do already take initiative, have six. Yeah, even if you, you know, do take initiative penalties from charging or whatever, you know, through, through terrain or anything like that, I mean, it's it's very helpful, especially for maybe those lesser units that might not have Well, it's much. just, it's if you're fighting uh, initiative four guys mm -hmm. and you have Lash, you're now striking first. Mm -hmm. So that's that's pretty much what it boils down to. And Patriot. I think you still have your Rending Claws uh -huh. to, to compensate with that. Patriot so. Claw is pretty simple. Rending it's AP3, trend. that's the difference. It's AP3, yep. Yeah. And then you get the Power Up. The Power Pick is Strength plus two, and it's AP3, so it's not as good as a Hammer, no. but it, uh, you know, it doesn't have two-handed. Yeah. And it's not a special weapon and all that. And so. the other thing too is uh, most, the Aberrants are also have Rending Claws, mm -hmm. so you can pick. So if you want to just swing first, these, these are unwieldy, but if you're, you know, swinging last or whatever, yeah. Running claws. Yeah, I mean, that heavy talons. rock cutter is just nasty. It's <laughs> so good. Snip, 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 snip. Special war gear. And then you have other special stuff, which the cult icon is basically plus one weapon skill, yep. which we talked about a little bit earlier. Yep. Uh, your sacred cult banner. Friendly units within 12 inches of the model with it have furious charge. Like so, yeah, if you have, and if you take the icon ward banner, don't forget you have both of those mm -hmm. abilities, so it mm -hmm. stacks, which is good. Gene Stater Familiar is obviously extra attacks, blasting charges, or, you know, it's all grenades. Sure. Like that. Uh, the Colt vehicle, the uh, drill Dozer blade. Yeah, you well, automatically pass all your drain, dangerous terrain tests. That's already a bonus. So you, I mean, you go through stuff, terrain, whatever. You're done. Yeah. Then if you ram an enemy vehicle, you add an extra d6 to your strength of the hit. If it causes a penetrating hit, add one to your damage table. It's basically AP two. Yeah, but uh, it's it's d6 extra strength hits, which uh -huh. is nice. And then uh, when it performs a tank shock. Every enemy unit that it reaches has to take an initiative test before their morale check. Mm -hmm. If the initiative test is passed, they avoid the cutters. But if you fail, you take D3, strength 10, AP2 hits. And then a bunch of other stuff. Well, um, the, the, here's the kicker. If yeah. you make your path, make your, say you, you make your thing, yeah. and you wanna do a death or glory attack, uh, and you you stop, you fail to stop the vehicle, you take additional, the additional D3, strength 10. In addition to your normal Damage from the failed attack. So you it theoretically could take two D three strength ten AP two hits. Yeah, I mean it just makes people in paste. Yeah, um, we'll we'll skip through the relics really quickly. Yeah. Uh, the one thing I did want to show off, uh, I think it was the icon. Oh mm -hmm. uh, yeah, friendly units that have the Gene Slayer Cult faction or the twelve inches of the model with equipped the icon of the Cult Ascendant have Furious Charge, Special Roll, and Cure Roll, Reroll, Failed Morale, Pinning, and Fear Test. In addition, models in the same unit of the icon have plus one attack. All varies a lot. So it's just so much, so many ways to get Furious Charge, get rerolls, ignore initiative penalties, bubbles. Yeah. Plus one weapon skill for everybody. Yeah. yeah. Uh, here's the psychic powers. Yeah, Brood Mind and Tactical Objectives. We don't really need to get into this too much. Yeah. Massive Gnosis, I think, is the big one. Um, yeah. It's their primary power. You can basically shut a unit down. Mm -hmm. um, their weapon skill, blood skill, initiative, and attacks. Or all reduced by one to a minimum of one. Yeah. It's only one warp charge. So yeah, the other the other one too. This big one is mind control. You can actually make uh, a enemy model shoot for you yeah. really quickly. Uh, we we won't get into all of them, but we'll yeah, we're out of time. Tactical but, objectives. Yeah, a lot of typical stuff. Not yeah. nothing too crazy there. Yeah, and then and then of course your breakdown. So. so so good. That it's, was it. That was everything. This is. I mean, it's an absolutely insane. Thing. Oh, so good. It's a lot. As a Tyranid player, again, I am both thrilled by this and a little jealous. Yeah. Um, I definitely want to have these guys as allies in my army. Which they're allies. Which you can. You can do it. They're allies of convenience. With Tyranids With and, Tyranids and Militarum. Ashram. Yep. So. There are come the apocalypse of everybody else, but you don't really need anybody else. No, you don't. You, you really don't. One of my, uh, I mean, one of my favorite things is just basically the, like I said, the mining, yeah. skit, the mining look, the mining weapons. Oh yeah, it's a really nice addition, I think. And I, I mean, it's it's an amazing book. Yeah. It's a great army. We yeah. have rambled on long enough. Let's well, hop out yeah. for a really quick recap. All right, so that was the Gene Stealer Cults Codex. It's pretty awesome. 
We are gonna run some numbers real quick. Obviously, oh, yeah. uh, Games Workshop. Obviously, Games Workshop. Forty K. new models. Fifty bucks for the codex. Or five thousand pennies. Or five thousand pennies. Now, if you pay five thousand pennies to your local GW or uh, retail gaming store, they will, they not, will like not sell it to you unless you have them pre-wrapped. Yeah, if you, like if they're from a bank and they're already in like their sleeves, maybe. Maybe. But maybe just a fifty dollar bill. Maybe take those to the bank. Yeah. And anyway, it's fifty bucks. Fifty bucks. It's totally awesome. It's insane. So, I mean, if you're, yeah. you know, if you're looking to get in 40k or you want a new army, uh, like, right here, yeah, you can't go wrong. Tyranid players, I'm with you on this one. I'm, yeah. I'm scared that this is a Tau player. Yes. Like I'm scared of this book. Anyway, As you should be obviously from Games Workshop. So. Obviously from Games Workshop, 40k. Mm -hmm. Oh, so good. It's in stores, hopefully by the time you see this video, yep. as in right now. Mm -hmm. I'm Adam Harry from Bella Souls. I'm Michael from Dragon's Lair Comics and Fantasy. And this has been another Tabletop Spotlight. Thanks for watching. Tabletop Spotlight brought to you by Dragon's Lair Comics and Fantasy. Thanks for watching.